Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So the New York Times, you know, they're huge. This is a big story. Put out this article about plant-based milks. Are they good for you? Scam or not? So I'm kind of wondering, some red flags are going off. Are they just trying to be really clickbaity with that scam or not question mark? Or instead, hopefully they're not and they're just going to make a very unbiased, objective presentation about plant-based milks because they're taken off of the marketplace lately. A lot of interest behind them. Unfortunately, this was an extremely biased article against plant-based milks, speaking with many experts who were completely clueless about plant-based diets. And let's just jump into it. For instance, they say some experts urge consumers to look beyond the hype and to examine the nutrition label, however, because some may not be as healthful as they seem. And here, you shouldn't assume, for instance, that plant-based milks contain the same nutrients as cow's milk. Well, yeah, no duh. Of course, plant milks are nutritionally different from cow milks. That's why many people choose them, apart from the lack of cruelty inherent in the dairy industry. Let's get back to these nutrients, like such as, yeah, cow milk is full of cholesterol, about 24 milligrams grams in a cup and also has about 25% of the recommended daily value or limit of saturated fat in one cup. And what this article fails to mention conveniently is that most scientific heart health and governmental professional authorities agree that saturated fat is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So yes, thank goodness plant-based milks and cow's milk are nutritionally different. I, for one, personally don't care for all the dietary cholesterol and saturated fat which are associated with heart disease, the number one killer of people in the West. But the article goes on to list all these other nutrients, and these are the ones they say that people drinking plant-based milks are lacking, such as protein, calcium, potassium, B vitamins, vitamin A. And this expert from the USDA says, and many plant-based milks don't provide enough of certain key nutrients like protein and potassium. So what I find disingenuous about this statement is it make it sounds like that non-infant humans need to drink bovine secretions in order to get all these nutrients else they run the risk of being deficient in protein or potassium or what have you like bovine milk is somehow essential for getting these nutrients like when was the last time you saw a protein deficient american vegan or otherwise i mean this is this is nonsense and like the same potassium like drinking cow's milk is is necessary for getting potassium like this is ridiculous because over 98 percent of a Americans are deficient in potassium. So there goes that argument. They're drinking all this milk, which is great for getting potassium, yet very few people get enough potassium in a day. Hmm. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is I really find it strange that the experts in this article are, seem to be saying that like drinking milk is somehow a really important part of getting your overall daily nutrition. I mean, how much milk are people really drinking? I mean, I don't depend on my plant-based milks to reach my nutritional goals for the day. Is, do meat people do that? I don't know, comment down below. Next, the article goes on to break down in more detail which nutrients are found in which plant-based milks and the experts experts here seem to not like most of the plant-based milks pretty much solely because they're lacking the same amount of protein that's in milk. Again, we don't need all this protein. You shouldn't depend on milk to get your protein. I'm not protein deficient or anything like that. I don't drink cow's milk. I haven't in over 10 years. Anyway, the two milks that the article seems to praise more or less are soy milk and pea milk, primarily because their protein content, no surprise there, matches up with that of cow's milk pretty well. So yeah, as you see, there's an obsession with protein amongst the experts in this article. And it makes me wonder, are these experts also like world-class bodybuilders? Like why do they need these enormous amounts of protein at every meal, at every bite, meat, dairy, the whole thing, all filled with protein? And as we'll see here, there's uh, in addition to this love of protein, there's also this kind of demonization of sugars and carbohydrates. Here they're asking, should we be worried about the sugars in plant-based milks? Because some, you know, have added sugars to sweeten them up but they're saying don't worry about the sugars though in dairy milk because lactose lactose milk is actually really good for you because it's digested more slowly and keeps your metabolism more stable over time than refined sugars oh really so the lactose sugar found in cow's milk is totally cool helps your digestion and all that 
while the sugars found in plant milks that are added to some plant milks are really bad for you. So this is a clear example of the bias in the article, highlighting the potential health risks of the plant-based side of the equation while failing to address any of the issues relating to the cow's milk side of the equation, here being lactose. They failed to mention that the majority of people on this planet don't process lactose all that well. About 30 to 50 million Americans are lactose intolerant. And once you look at people of color, those numbers add up. 75% of all African American and Native Americans and approximately 90% of Asian Americans, such as myself, are lactose intolerant. So yes, billions of people on this planet are lactose intolerant and this article makes zero mention of that. I wonder why. And of course, the article points out that cow's milk is less expensive. And this is a quote from a person from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So take that, all you haters who like to tell me that, that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is some vegan organization. They say it's your best bang for your buck. It's got all these nutrients and costs less. And again, why are health experts assuming that people need to get their nutrition from milk? Since I don't and I'm doing quite fine right now. Fortunately, they talked to another expert who brings up a different point of view. He says that for him, the higher price of plant milks is worth it for the animal welfare and environmental reasons. He says, quote, I've never met a belching soybean or pea. He said, referring to cow's emissions of methane gas. If you are an eco warrior, it could be worth the cost. And likewise, you're never gonna see a headline showing that people who eat whole food plants and drink plant-based milks are at higher risk of dying of the leading causes of death. For instance, let's have a look at this Swedish study which found that those who consume the most milk and the fewest servings of fruits or vegetables had higher mortality rates. And likewise, if we have a look at this Chinese study, the same thing. It showed that high milk consumption showed a higher risk of total cancer mortality. But does the New York Times article mention any of these studies? Do they share with their viewers any of these potential very real risks of drinking milk? Of course not. And since some pro-environmental mention got brought up for plant-based milks, of course the article had to try to counter that by saying how almond milk requires this enormous amount of water. And as I've shown before, yeah, it's a lot of water, but it's nothing. It's literally a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of water required to grow feed crops for cows. And this chart produced by a UC Davis professor, and UC Davis is in the agricultural heartland here in California. As you can see here, the vast majority of agricultural water usage goes to feed crops for cows. And up here where the red arrows, that's the amount of water used for growing almonds. It's literally a drop in the bucket compared to what's used for feed crops for cows. So if this article wasn't bad and biased enough, it ends in an equally bad and biased way. Here they ask the question, are plant-based milks bad for me? And let's just read this together because it's hilarious. We don't have to be afraid of them, as Dr. Ludwig said, but concern creeps in as you start to increase the amount. Oh really, why would that be Dr. Ludwig? He says, because of their lack of certain nutrients, low level of protein and high amount of carbohydrates in some, Dr. Ludwig recommends drinking no more than one cup per day. I mean, I don't even know what to say. There's a lot to unpack here. I mean, if they're low in nutrients, you would want to drink more to get more of the nutrients, right? But I've, as I've discussed several times, I don't understand this idea of depending on milk to reach your nutritional needs for the day. Secondly here, he, you see what he's doing here? It's, it's like the book Proteinaholic by Dr. Garth Davis. He's in love with protein. He wants you to get as much protein from all your milk and all your meals, protein, protein, protein. Protein's good, but on the other hand, he's fearful of carbs. He said carbohydrates are to be limited and feared. And why is that? I mean, where, let me see your studies that eating whole food plant carbohydrates is somehow bad for you, will cause heart disease. Nope, we saw you, that your milk does that. Causes cancer? Nope, we saw that your milk does that. I have about maybe 400 to 500 grams of carbohydrates a day. I'm 53 years old. I'm not pre-diabetic or diabetic. I'm not obese. I'm not out of shape. I'm quite fit. I'm on zero medications, which is odd. Most people my age are on multiple pharmaceutical medications. So this nonsense about fearing carbohydrates and trying to consume as much protein as like humanly possible in every meal 
is just just not complete nonsense and that unfortunately seems to be the type of thinking that flows throughout this article except for that one person that they talked to that you know mentioned how you know, the eco benefits doesn't mind paying a little bit more for plant-based milk because it's not going to destroy the planet anyway other than that one mention there this entire article as you saw was just complete just a waste of time and it's just putting more bad information out there about like you know why people should be afraid of veganism and be afraid of all these plant-based alternatives. As I showed her, they intentionally didn't mention any of the risks when it came to the risks, the health risks and environmental risks of their cow milk, but were super quick to point out any environmental and potential health risks of eating plants, you know? So nice job, New York Times, of uh, making my life harder by having to make these videos responding to your nonsense, your misinformation about, about plant-based diets. So I challenge you guys. I thought you guys were a decently legit publication. Put out a better article out there. Actually talk to some doctors who are knowledgeable in plant-based nutrition, on plant-based ecology, environmentalism, instead of talking to these people who obviously don't know how to get their nutrition because they think they have to have milk all the time to meet their daily nutritional needs whatever anyway guys leave your questions and comments down below let me know what you thought of this article let me know if you read it before i did and let me know if any other youtubers responded to it. i always like to see how others respond to it as well um Anyway guys, sorry I haven't made a video in a week, just life's been super busy and hopefully things will start calming down in another day or two. Fingers crossed guys. So anyway, um, until then, yeah, subscribe, like, go to our store, buy our, our book, Happy, Happy Healthy Vegan Cookbook in ebook or print book form, get a t-shirt, muscle tea, and until next time guys, let's keep it vegan. When does the pain Yeah.